Let's modify vanilla loot tables and add custom items to vanilla drops. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and rideable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Oh, 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 oh right. We find us back in the once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom drops to, well, vanilla loot tables, and this is done via global loot modifiers. Now, one very important thing that we need to do is we need to navigate to the gradle.properties file. And if you are on version 47.0.45 or lower, you need to update to at least 47.0.46. Otherwise, drops for entities are not going to work. Now, we will actually update to 47.1.3 because from all I've heard is this is going to be the last version that NeoForge is going to be compatible with. Now, I have not yet decided, and because this is a development that's still unfolding, I'm going to probably stick to just saying, you know, 47.1.3 is fine. If you are higher than that, you should be good to go as well in theory, but I'm going to stick with this version, and yeah, let's just update. Let's hit the reload gradle changes over here. Let this run through. This might take, you know, once again, a minute, two minutes, depending on how fast your PC is and all sorts of other things. Just let this run through. And once you get a build successful, we can proceed from there. There we go. Build successful in one minute, 58 seconds. And we can now proceed. First of all, in the tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called loot. And inside there, we'll make two Java classes. The first one is the mod loot modifiers. And the second one is the add item modifier class. There we go. We're to start with the add item modifier this will extend the loot modifier from net minecraft forge common loot over here we're going to hover over this implement the methods over here hover over this again create constructor matching super we don't need the java doc over here that's going to be fine and also we need to make this public there we go that's gonna be awesome and then we can proceed so First, we need is a codec. Now, I will just be copying over the codec over here. The add item modifier is a custom class over here from me that basically just allows you to add one item to a specific loot table here in this case. And this should always be the same. In the constructor, you want to add an item parameter. And then you want to say this dot item is equal to the item parameter. And that should be that. In the codec, you can then return codec dot get. And then the most important things are happening in the do apply method. Because the idea is that when a specific loot table is generated, the generated loot right here, these are the item stacks that are actually going to drop. And you now want to return the exact same loot table, right? With maybe some changes along the way. So for example, what we could do is we could say, hey, generated loot. And because this is just a list, we could say, hey, add a new item stack of our item, this dot item. And there we go. And with this, we've added the item that is specified over here to our loot. We're going to specify for what loot tables this happens in just a moment, of course. But that is one of the things. What we also want to do, and this is just a good idea, is we want to make a for each loop for each loot item condition over here. That's the condition for this dot conditions. And we'll say if the conditions test and then pass in, passing in the context over here, if they're false, then we're just going to return the generated loot. This basically allows us to also add item conditions or loot item conditions to our global modifier and then basically add things like the random chance or similar things like that. And that's actually the entire class that we need right here. We can then proceed to the mod loot modifiers class where we will need a public static final deferred register of type codec of type question mark extends extends i global loot modifier. This is the loot modifier serializers which is equal to a deferred register dot create forge registries dot keys dot global loop modifier serializers and then tutorial mod dot mod id and whether it's a deferred register there also is a public static void register method passing in an i event bus called event bus and we'll say loot modifier serializers dot register passing in the event bus parameter here there we go and let's immediately call the register method right here it's gonna be mod loot modifiers dot register passing in the mod event bus there we go and now we'll make a public static final registry object of a type codec of type question mark extends i global loot modifier over here this is the add underscore item equal to loot modifiers serializers register i'm going to call this the add underscore item and this is the add item modifier dot 
codec. Awesome. That is it. This is the modifier registered. And now, crazy enough, we can do everything with custom data gen. Let's go. So basically in the data gen package, we're going to right click new Java class called the mod global load modifiers provider. An insanely long name for a pretty cool class. This is going to extend the global loot modifier provider. Hover over this, implement the start method, and then hover over this again. Create constructor matching super. We can delete the mod ID from the constructor because, of course, we know our mod ID. It is tutorial mod dot mod ID. And now in the start method, we can call the add over here. We're going to add a name for the modifier. So let's, for example, say, what do we want to do? Well, how about we let, get the pine cone over here, maybe from grass? I mean, it's not like the most specific thing, but why not? Pine cone from grass, let's say. Right, and then for this, we're going to make a new a new item modifier right here with the following loot condition. So we're going to make a new loot item condition array over here. This is exactly correct. And the way that this is going to look like is as follows. So inside of the curly brackets, we're going to build the following. We're going to make a loot item block state pro property condition has block state property. And we're just going to say blocks.grass. This is the grass where seeds drop from. So keep that in mind, dot build. And then we can add multiple ones, right? So after the build, you can do a comma. And then, for example, we want to say loot item random chance condition dot random chance. And let's say the probability is 35% that this drops dot build again. And then after the closing curly bracket, we would then want to specify which item it is. So now we're back in the add item modifier constructor. And this is going to be mod items dot pinecone dot get. And that is literally it. This will now add a JSON file that's going to add our pinecone with a 35% chance to the grass block drop. And we can do something similar. Let's copy this over. And for example, say maybe the pinecone can also drop from a creeper because why not? Then what you want to do is instead of a, a property over here, what we're going to do is we're going to make this 100%. So, so we'll not have the random chance over here. But what we will have is we will have a new loot table ID condition builder with a new resource location. The resource location is entities slash creeper. And once again, call dot build over here. And there we go. Now with a 100% certainty, the pine cone is added to the creeper. Where do I get this resource location from? Well, once again, you can go to the external libraries over here all the way down to netminecraft client extra 120.1 or whatever your version might be data minecraft loot tables. And then right here, this is the root directory and you can see entities and then creeper is right here. And you can add it for all of those basically. So the similar thing would work for chests. So let's duplicate this again. And let's say this is not the pine comb, but this is the metal underscore detector underscore from underscore jungle underscore temples. There we go. And then instead of entities creeper, this is now actually chests slash jungle underscore temple. Of course, always double checking that the name over here, the resource location is written correctly. And then instead of the pine cone, this is going to be the metal detector. And we're going to do it with 100% certainty again, because why not? And that's basically it. This is the idea of the star method. You can add as many as you want. And now we just need to make sure that the global modifier over here, the provider is also added. But that is as simple as going once again to our data generators over here to the very bottom. Generator.addProvider, event.include server, and then a new mod global load modifiers provider passing in the pack output. And that's it. If we now run our data over here, everything is going to get generated, well, basically automatically. So we don't have to do anything else but create that class. And there we go. If you want different modifiers, so basically instead of an item, you want to put in an item stack or maybe instead of one item, you want to add two items. You can, of course, add your own custom modifiers over here. You can also remove things from this. I highly recommend against it. This is a normal list, so you can clear the list if you wanted to. I just wanted to caution you against that because, you know, changing too many things might make your mod not compatible with other mods. So do keep that in mind. But we can now see data and a data tutorial loop loot modifiers. We have our modifiers over here and under forge, we have the loot modifiers basically all in there. So that's going to be fine. So we can now jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, us back in Minecraft and let's just see if the creeper is going to spawn our pine cone. And there it is, a pine cone added right there. And if we switch to survival mode and we break some grass, you can see there we go. We actually got a pretty luck in the first one because it's only a 35% chance. Might be too high, by the way, but you can, of course, always change the numbers. That is a thing that you can always keep in mind. And then let's actually go and actually search for a jungle temple as well. And in the jungle temple, we can see the metal detector. Absolutely freaking awesome. And that is modifying vanilla loot tables. 
as always, of course, all of the code is available to you in the description below. And next time, we'll actually add stuff to a Suspicious Sand. So go right ahead and take a look at it right here. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.